Just, Speaking of which, yeah. so the women in our lives, oh, would you agree that the women in your life are harder on you than anyone else? And the reason I ask that is because I came across this uh, YouTube clip that I want to share with you guys real quick, and I want you guys to react on it, get your yeah, input it. on it. So let me turn off the volume, click on the link. I did not interview men for the first four years of my study. And it wasn't until a man looked at me one day after a book signing and said, I love what you have to say about shame. I'm curious why you didn't mention men. And I said, I don't study men. And he said, that's convenient. <laughs> and I said, why? And he said, because you say to reach out, tell our story, be vulnerable. But you see those books you just signed for my wife and my three daughters? I said, yeah. They'd rather me die on top of my white horse than watch me fall down. When we reach out and be vulnerable, we get the shit out of us. And don't tell me it's from our, the guys and the coaches and the dads. Because the women in my life are harder on me than anyone else. All right, so... Well, on that one day I spoke with you a few weeks ago, I never talked to anyone else about that. Imposter syndrome? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's funny when guys come to guys about when we at our most vulnerable or at a vulnerable moment, we lift each other up. In my marriage, when I was married, I could never do that with my ex. Wrong choice, that's why I'm not with her, but I wanted to get you guys input because that video resonated with me. And so you couldn't be vulnerable? Could not. Mm -hmm. Couldn't show any weakness, got this, nothing I did was ever good enough. Even when I got the new job, when she lost her job, and it was up to me to pay the bills, provide for our daughter, and we had our son on the way, and she wasn't working. I got a better paying job that paid two thirds more than I was making, wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. It was just, you're supposed to. I'm not looking for a medal here, but at the same time, where's the gratefulness? Where's the appreciation? Well, the acknowledgement. Some kind of acknowledgement, yeah. something, because it was yeah. not an easy interview. And it turned out that employer was the godfather of my son. Mm -hmm. And we still hang out. I consider him a mentor. But hit me. So I want to ask you guys, what are your thoughts on that? About um, women being hard on you guys and the men? Uh, so I have mostly women in my life, right? Yeah. So all my best friends except for one um they're all women right my uh, i have four sisters <laughs> right moms and aunts right so i would say probably 80 percent of the people in my life are women so they are hard on me but it's not because they're women it's just they're it's because they're my friends or my relatives and they're hard on me because they want to see me improve um but at the same time i can still be vulnerable with almost all of them, I would say. I would, all of them, I would probably say. Mm -hmm. Some more so than others. And I know who to go to for which thing. Yeah. And I know who not to go to. But uh, in a pinch, you know, I, I, was, I know who to go to when I'm really suffering because I know who's going to be an ear to listen. But then I also know the person to go to, and I know she'll listen to me, but she'll also be like, all right, I didn't heard you. <laughs> and that's great. <laughs> I feel for you. Uh, but here's what you need to do. Yeah. And so I don't know. It's a tough question for me to answer because I, mostly women are in my life and they're all hard on me in some ways. But because of that, I've been able to improve yeah. as a person. And I have certain insights and, uh, you know, just knowledge about women, but like about life because of the women in my life. I don't know if that makes any sense. But uh, yeah, I, so, you know. I don't know how to answer that question. They're all hard on me, <laughs> but it's in a good way because it's it's for it's for the betterment of myself and for them because they're I'm in their lives, mm -hmm. and so I have to be able to um, you know provide for myself, but provide for the people in my life, which yeah. are mostly women anyway. Right. So it's it's a good thing. And also, want to add to it? It's a tough question for me as well. Like Larry said it's the demographics of who's around him, his, yeah. his family tree. For me, um, no one pushes me harder than myself. Mm. So unfortunately, I can't relate to that question because it sounds very tellish, but my wife doesn't ask for anything. And that's why I strive to give her everything because she doesn't ask for nothing. Mm. And whatever I've provided, she's accepted even when we struggle. Mm. She's never applied pressure on me 
which is a blessing because I don't deal with pressure from others well because I'm always challenging myself, myself to do yeah. better than people recognize. Mm -hmm. They don't know my drive. They don't understand my hustle. They don't understand my gifts. I know me because God has put so much in me that mm -hmm. I, I try my best to follow what he's lead, where he's leading me. But even beyond that, before my walk with Christ, um, I've always been driven. I've always been motivated to do more, have more. So I never really needed outside pressure yeah. to help me go a certain direction. It was that never worked well with me. Um, I'm coachable, but my wife doesn't she doesn't apply pressure that will be combustible for me. Right. A lot of times I'm checking my own ego at the door like I did that I was out of line before she even will say it. Right. I can kind of read the room and read her energy and be like, okay, that was, that was on me. Mm -hmm. So because she understands me, she doesn't apply anything that's too much. Now, sometimes we do need to be pushed, but again, I'm pushing myself. So it's, it's, a, that's a one-off for me that my wife isn't like that supportive in their vocal sense. Mm -hmm. She's, she's, she's more supportive in all the other things she'll carry because she knows I'm trying to figure something out. It's almost like an unspoken language. Yeah. So I'm blessed in that regard. But, um, and we've grown with each other where I can be vulnerable, even if I don't have the answer. So like recently, we've been struggling with our daughters because one's in college, one just finished college and one's going into her senior year in high school. And I've had to like say to her, I'm grieving my babies not being babies anymore. Yeah. That's something I brought to her. Those are things that I'm driving the bus on in conversation. And so hmm. I'm pushed by myself to just be the best leader and example for my girls. Cause I didn't have a father in the home mm -hmm. to model after. Yeah. Where, whether it was a good day or a bad day. I didn't have a father at home to help me with homework. I didn't have a father at home to tell me who to hang out with, but I had a heavenly father that kept giving me nothing but the best around me. So I started recognizing my walk and my path and, and I'll, I'll shut up after this, but I started recognizing my circle and I started picking from my friend's dad, what he does. Mm -hmm. I started picking away what my uncle does and how he cares for his wife, my auntie. And so I started seeing the people around me as examples to model after because mm -hmm. I didn't have that. And I, I'm just like, I am my, I'm a mirror of my community and people I hang with. So, um, sometimes a chameleon in that regards. But with my wife, um, she's not that vocal leader like that, yeah. but she supports me in other ways as subliminal and just her energy, her consciousness to see um, I, I need help in this area or I might need a massage or something, but we don't talk through the pressure of her driving saying, you need to do more of this. It does, we don't have those kind of conversations all the time like that. So I wonder if it's, I don't know if it's just a black woman thing or if it's a woman thing, but I've only experienced it with black women where like they don't need to say anything. It's like a look, <laughs> right? And I'm not, I don't mean that like the bad, I don't, I don't mean to look like, you know, when no, they look at you and you're like, you know, that's trouble. funny. That's why Why'd you say that because <laughs> Oh, mine says it. <laughs> that, ain't no look. That's hilarious. It's really impressive. <laughs> that's hilarious because the funny thing you say that the look my wife gives me is the most important thing. Mm. How she looks at me tells me everything I need to know. Mm -hmm. It's a black woman. I thing. get it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a black woman. No, it might for be. me, it's just it, whether I was married to some someone else. It's the look because she doesn't necessarily I need agree to be you. vocal. Yeah, she just because you you say you can walk in the room and feel the energy from her look, and you already know. Okay, I need to. Yeah, that was on me. I need to check myself. Yeah, because she doesn't need to verbally communicate because you guys are so connected, and you've been married. Before oh, you got yes. married, y'all were in a relationship for such a long mm -hmm. time. You are, you know, those nonverbal. Yeah, things. absolutely. And so I that's, feel like that's fair. You know, she didn't need to talk about talk to you about something that's wrong or not wrong. She could just shoot you that look, and you're like, "Yeah, all right, babe, I got it." Yeah, and trust me, we do have our our conversations. Sure. But for motivational sure. purposes, with your question, um, she doesn't lead me in that mm. regard. You know, I I'll end it with this. We have a coworker, or you know her. Um, when we're doing a food shoot. Mm -hmm. um, at the restaurant, the casino, you know, I was like, I don't know what looks good. Does this look good? Let's try it this way. And my boss was like, just try it. And they, we just know you'll make something happen. We like the way your videos come out. The other girl was like, she's more of a planner. Like, mm -hmm. man, you need to plan this. 
okay, well, this is my first time doing it. I thought you know how to edit. I do, but I'm not a food photographer. I'm not a videographer. I just give me some clips and I'll do my best to make it make sense. So I'm learning on the job here. And plus it's a brand new department Mm -hmm. and a brand new position that was just created a couple months ago. So I didn't take it personally. She was like, hey, you have to be prepared and you can't do this because we're on a time slot and you have to be respectful that I'm a model. I did this before. Yeah. If I show up to a shoot, it's very unprofessional. People get mad. Like if I'm only booked for two hours and you taking three, I'm leaving at two. Yeah. I'm not going to wait. You're going to approve my third hour. Then I have to go through these. Yeah. You know. So the next day in the morning, like at 7 a.m., she sends me a text. Morning. I'm sorry if I came a little harsh on you. You're doing great. I just want to do the best I can. I want to help you out. And from what I can tell, you're 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 doing the best you can. So I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, we're good. <laughs> like, I'll humbly take any opinion that you have. It's just a learning experience for me. So I think the question is, it just based on your life experience. Guys can be just as hard as you as women can, too. Why did I chose that question? Just because it's a reaction to that video. Well, yeah, that's in the business environment, too. So yeah. with business, you you want to set expectations. I'm the only guy in that like department. So, yeah. relationship, yeah. you mm-hmm. want to set the expectation. But that's a business encounter where you're trying to get a, a project done mm-hmm. with your spouse which you started that's a different with, thing, yeah, yeah that's another that level is completely different yeah, yeah. yeah. completely so, different completely yeah. different yeah. it's hard not to take it personal when that's the nature of our relationship is personal personal yeah right in a, in a, in a professional setting it's not personal it's so you know, it's, it's, like, it's not supposed to be yeah. so you have to take that constructive criticism mm-hmm. but when it's your girlfriend it's or personal. your wife, mm-hmm. it's that's a personal relationship. So yeah, everything is personal. <laughs> but now, even with that, even with the personal matter, though, let me capitalize on what what Larry said. Even with that, um, it's for the benefit usually of the marriage or the relationship, or whatever the situation is. Yeah. yeah. Um, oftentimes, when I was younger, when Michelle would say something to me or critique something or, or give me uh, that that input, I took it personally. I took it personally as she was honestly an adversary. Mm-hmm. She, I saw her as an adversarial relationship. Even when we argued, I saw you as an adversary. And my, one of the things she said, Orlando, I'm never your adversary. I'm, I'm your wife. I'm your partner. Mm-hmm. And I'm never your adversary. So if you treat me like an adversary or an enemy, that's going to interfere with our relationship. She goes, well, if I'm telling you something, I'm giving you some feedback, it's because I care if I want to improve things. Since I may see something you may not necessarily see. Mm-hmm. I don't see everything. And so I take her feedback, even sometimes I don't like it. I ain't gotta like it. I gotta look <laughs> at it for what it is. I have to look up for what it is. And to capitalize on what last thing on what Larry said, see when black women or whomever they give a look, me, I'm I'm very, very transparent. You give me a look, I'll ignore it and keep watching TV. You got to tell me. No, no, you got to tell me. Look ain't gonna get it. <laughs> Because I'm very literal. You, I, I need to understand. A look a, can be all kinds of things. So you need to tell me what, what specifically specifically is going on that I need to look at, that could work on, or yeah. whatever like that. And then I'll take it from there. But if you just give me a look, I'm like, oh, okay. Keep right, right, right on watching TV or going about my business. So it's, it's going to be important. So that's where the communication really has to be. Sure. You have to communicate. It has, and it has to be a two-way streak. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Makes yeah. sense. All right. Yeah.